We're live! <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Yay! Okay, so while we're waiting for people, I'm just going to set my computer up so that I can see the live chat and everything. Um, it just went live, like, on the real time Great. thing. But um, how's everybody doing tonight? Doing good. good. <laughs> what what How time are you? Oh, I'm good. What time zones do we have? I it's only six o'clock for me, so I'm like still going strong here. It's nine for me right now. Yeah, okay, nine so for me. East Coast. What about you? It's Kat? Eight for me. Yeah. Eight and uh, it's six for me too. I'm in California. Oh, sweet. We got two Californians. Wow. California <laughs> is the only state that matters. I mean, come on. <laughs> 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 okay, so this is the live show for the Sassy Book Club. We're talking about When Dimple Met Rishi tonight. Woo! Yes, contemporary about two people who go to a science camp and one of them knows that they're supposed to meet because their parents want them to meet and the other one doesn't know a thing. <laughs> um, next month, our Sassy Book Club is going to be reading... The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. So if you want to follow on Twitter or anything, we actually have a buddy reads for the first time. So I'm going to be buddy reading using Twitter starting on the 19th of The Raven Boys. So that'll be a new thing for me. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check it out. Um, okay, so I'm go ahead. Who was Can I just say I'm so glad you pronounced Rishi's name right because everyone pronounces it incorrectly. So the only reason I pronounced it correctly is because the book corrected me. I don't know if you guys caught that, but the book tells you how to say it. There's a scene. We'll, we'll get is more it into Rishi? it. Is it Rishi? No, it's Rishi with an. Oh, I thought oh, I okay. thought it was correcting you the other way. That's my. Oh, so it is Rishi. I thought it yeah. was Rishi. Oh yeah. No, it's I was. Okay, okay, okay. Now I know. I was saying it Rishi in my head, and then you got to the dinner scene, and I was like, oh, she's oh, making fun of her saying, for saying it I how I'm thinking it. Rishi, and then I read that scene, I was like, oh, I'm saying it wrong. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Intellects over here. <laughs> so what did you guys rate it? I gave it a, I think I gave it a five out of five. I really liked it. What's our order? Where, how are we going down here? Four. Uh, let's go me, Momo, Laura, Cav, Christina, and feel free to tell you your channels and all the all the good promotion <laughs> stuff too. <laughs> cool. Oh my god. Yeah, go. yeah, Momo go. Um, I gave it a 3.5 out of five stars. Um, and my channel's a booktube girl. And yeah, are we just doing that first? Or are we doing yeah. like thoughts? You, yeah, you can give non-spoilery thoughts, whatever um, you like. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. It was just like a fun, fluffy, like it was kind of just like a little bit of a rom-com, which was great. Um, and I always love that in a contemporary book. But it was just a little bit like, it was a little bit unrealistic for my tastes. I like my contemporaries to be a little bit more like everyday realistic, but it was good. But I had my issues. Next person. Mm -hmm. I also gave the book 3.5 out of 5 stars. I really liked it. I thought it was fun and had a lot of good elements to it. It was a perspective that I haven't really read from much before, but I thought it was a little bit slow moving until about like the last 100 pages. That's when it kind of picked up for me. But overall, I did think it was really cute and I did enjoy it. And also my channel is lovely like Laura. I didn't say that. But yeah, overall, I thought it was good. I did enjoy it. Uh, I'm Cobb from the channel X Reading Salus X, and if you have seen my channel, you know that this is one of my favorite books of all time. This was my second time reading it, um, and my first time reading it was an arc that I got back in March of last year, uh, and I gave it a five out of five stars again. Um, and my opinions about this book are a lot more like deeper than um, a lot of others because this book is the first time I've ever seen my ethnicity represented in um, not just one but two main characters um, by an author of my ethnicity as well so that's part of the reason I love it um, and for me the real connection to it is that both of the characters are so rooted in Indian culture and in very different ways because Dimple is much more critical of it while Rishi is much more proud of it and I just like that it could highlight the negative and positive aspects of my culture really well. Nice. Ooh. All right. Um, I'm Christina from Christina's Journey. 
and I gave it like on Goodreads like a three star, but it's more of like a two point five star for me. I oh. just oof. <laughs> yeah, I just it's not that I hated it. I didn't hate it. I just didn't like it because not because I had high expectations, but because I didn't get what I thought I was gonna get. Like for example, um Dimple is supposed to go to this program about or this summer program where she was supposed to develop an app and all of that. And I was very excited about that. And like in the middle of the book, they totally forgot about that. And I was just like, I agree on that. <laughs> what, what is, what, what? No. So um, I felt it was, uh, I, I really liked the beginning, especially when they met. But after that, it was very slow. And I it felt like a chore to actually finish the book. I just didn't like it. Mm-hmm. What were some of your guys's pet peeves that came up in the book because I mean even so coming from somebody who really liked it um I loved a lot of the book but it's still a very fluffy contemporary and I find a lot of pet peeves in fluffy YA contemporary (laughs) would you like to start us off Cassie yes I would (laughs) I found it super annoying that our main character Dimple comes from modest means and the love interest has money coming out of his ass. I <laughs> I will buy you know, I will buy everyone. <laughs> and you will have no self-determination because I am your funds. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to die. <laughs> uh, yeah, especially in that scene during the, the the dinner scene was like so pivotal for so many reasons, in my opinion. I I, I loved it and I hated it all at once. Mm-hmm. But that, oh, again, like, I still love this book, so it, there's a lot to, like, forgive for me, and right. it's very easy for me to get over things that I didn't like when I love other things so much, um, but there are still, oh my gosh, him buying dinner for everyone, even when they were all so rude and Extra mean. is what it was. <sighs> it was so annoying. And of course, he's, like, so just, like, who would even know that he had money and that his dad was CEO, because he's so nice and normal. Mm-hmm. Even though he had, hmm. not that people who have money can't be normal. That's not what annoyed me. What annoyed me was, of course, he's the one person who's normal. Yeah, that's so love true. Interest. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, pet peeves. Um, I, I don't, like, she kind of did the I'm not like other girls trope. Just, like, it wasn't too obvious, but it was just enough to make me twitch. Um, I think Celia was her name that was the the room knight. Was it Celia? Yeah. I just make up that name. Yeah. Um, there are a couple lines in there that I was just like, she really distanced herself from how Celia was. And it just kind of played into that, like, traditional trope. I feel like it kind of salvaged itself at the end there. Um, and she did, like, prioritize hers and, like, Celia's friendship. But there were a few times where it's just like, I feel like she was just putting down traditional girls um especially like she had like a thing against makeup which isn't like that's fine if you don't want to wear makeup but I just feel like sometimes the way she talked about it I guess yeah yeah I oh agree. Cassie go no no I was just gonna say I agree go ahead Laura <laughs> yeah that's what I was gonna say too the makeup thing was the one kind of <laughs> thing I was gonna bring up but I guess like the one like main thing just about Dimple in general was like how adamant she was in the fact that like she was traditional and she wasn't there for love or anything like that and it felt like it changed so fast and she just Mm -hmm. like ended up falling for him like so quickly and just kind of forgot about that which I mean I guess it did kind of go back at the end when she like realizes what she's doing and like she's not actually focusing on why she came there but just it seemed kind of too fast I don't really know it was like her own ideals like she kind of let them go for a little bit like she was so strong in them in the beginning and it feels like Mm -hmm. it was so easily changed right it really made it hard for me to like warm up to Rishi because I was just like "Mm." yeah you know (laughs) exactly so yeah that was like kind of my one thing but other than that nothing I can really think of pet peeves wise all right um I think my only pet peeve was what Cassie said about Rishi coming from a ton of money that just the part where he paid for everyone's dinner, that part really did (laughs) make me feel really uncomfortable because it just look, Dimple specifically told him she didn't want him to do that and then he went ahead and did it when she had told him that and that just felt really like. I feel like that was a recurring theme in this book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely an annoying part. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with everything you've said, but at the same time, one thing that I had like a lot of problems with was that I felt that the author was trying to make us look at these other characters, like the other two women, Celia and Isabel, I think was her name, and the other two guys, like they were the worst yeah, possible yeah, exactly. people just to make us see Dimple and Rishi as the best people. And right, I was just right, like, right. I like I understand there are some people that come from money and they can be total asses. But at the same time, it's just like a stereotype. And I think she was using that in order for us to love Dimple and Rishi. But at the same time, I was just like, I, I feel they are exaggerating a little bit and they're a little bit judgy. I know they the the characters were very mean to them, but I but at the same time I felt that uh, the author did that on purpose, and I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Uh, can I comment on that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I the one thing I I this is a common criticism that it uses the not like other girls trope, but just and obviously you guys can interpret it however you want. I don't want to. No, make like the way I read it was just kind of I thought Celia was portrayed in a more positive light like I think there was something about having a character who doesn't like makeup who doesn't like any of that traditional stuff to be best friends with someone who was very stereotypically a girly girl and who loves makeup who loves dressing up and I kind of felt like everything Dimple did give to Isabel um was earned because Isabel and um Hurry and whatever the other one's name was were were blatantly racist towards Dimple, but I felt so I felt like that was more justified. Um, and I do think she was more critical of Celia, but I felt like that was kind of resolved as the book went on and as their friendship was strengthened. But that's just how I read it. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. I agree. I read I read the criticisms that Dimple made of Celia more about their friendship, even mm -hmm. though like they didn't start out being. It wasn't like they were best friends or anything. But they had this this previous relationship before they get there. And if anyone knows what having an online friendship that you go to live with each other. I mean, me and Momo have now lived, not lived together, but we spent how Please many days? We lived together. I, I will have we to lived that. together for however many days. And it was a really easy, easy thing to mm -hmm. do. But that's not always the case. I mean, you can mm -hmm. have this friendship online and then you meet in person and you spend more than four days together and you're like, no, I'm no. going to murder you. <laughs> no more of that. Yeah. So like, I think that, I think Celia and Dimple's relationship was a pretty realistic thing to happen for somebody, for these two people who meet, they have their similar interests, but they also have their very different interests. And they hadn't lived together like prior to that, and mm -hmm. they were still getting used to each other and kind of meeting each other for the first time. Right, right, exactly. And like they have other things than like makeup, but um, like their their differences. I the biggest thing that I found Dimple had a problem with Celia was how much she was obsessed with the boy that she was dating. Question yeah. mark. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I I found it very realistic, is all I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're problems together or whatever um yeah. books and baking said that they didn't like how dimple kept punching rishi but i want to talk about that <laughs> later when we get into more spoily <laughs> stuff because yeah. i feel like you can't talk about the punching without talking about other parts of the story um yeah. so i think it might be time where if you're watching and haven't read it yet it's time to say goodbye um or or watch but don't be mad if you get spoiled because <laughs> don't do <laughs> it <laughs> Probably a bad plan. Okay, so what was your guys' favorite moment in the book? I have I, one. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I think my like, I didn't have a lot of moments that I like, but I can mention two. The first one is when they met. I thought that was hilarious because I didn't, since I have an ebook, I don't, I haven't, I hadn't seen the back of the book. I didn't know what was gonna happen. So when it happened, I was just like, oh, this is so funny. That's, yeah, exactly. I didn't, I didn't even see notice her. that. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that. So when they met, oh. I think that was hilarious. And at the same time, the other 
moment that I loved was when they were rehearsing for the talent show and then they fell down and they were kissing and I, I was going to say that. I love that <laughs> just so popped there it. out of nowhere and I started laughing out loud I loved it yeah I agree that was my favorite moment of the book mm-hmm. anyway uh, <clears throat> That moment, I mean, obviously them meeting with the um, coffee was iconic and everyone knows about it. But my favorite moment was more towards the end of the book. I, I don't know exactly when this happened, but there was a point where um, after Dimple went home and like she and Rishi had had their very short period in time breakup, um, she had a conversation with her mother where she like told her mother, oh, I know you don't really approve of me, but her mother said that the reason I've been making those comments was because I could see the sadness in your eyes. And I think that gave another level to Dimple and her mother's relationship, which had been based on fighting, but it showed that like Dimple's ideas about her mother were not all true and that her mother really did want her to be happy because she always had a good relationship with her father, but it was much more strained with her mother. And I just thought that was really powerful, Mm -hmm. um, especially as an Indian American teen living in a household with Indian parents. Can I expand on that? I really like, um, I liked the end of this story where um, the same thing happened with Rishi when he was talking to his dad about going to art school is that they were kind of saying that um, they both had different uh, perceptions of how their, how their parents felt and they kind of like, they, they turned it at the end. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. What about you, Laura? I really liked like kind of at the way end where she actually got the chance to meet, I don't remember her name, but like the app developer that was like, the, yeah, the person that you won. Um, and like Rishi did that for her. I thought that was just like so full circle. And it was like a little bit like cheesy that like, of course she was going to get to meet her and like they would make her app. <laughs> like I was kind of like, you could see it the whole time, but I still thought it was really cute. And then at the like, end, exactly what out, I wanted. yeah. And then at the end too, when you find out that he got to talk to the guy that, he looked up to regarding the comics and stuff like that. I just thought it was really cute. But you kind of see it coming, but it's still really cute. <laughs> My favorite part was when Rishi got to meet the uh, the comic artist guy. And yeah. he's, like, shaking and nervous <laughs> and doesn't show any of his art. And all of that stuff. I felt it really hard inside of my body because I have met people who... You, you like you look up to these people who in the end are just freaking people but you like hype it up yeah. so hard in your head and Momo experienced that experience with me the one I'm thinking of which was when I met Ash yes. and Grace yeah. Hardell <laughs> it was really intense and I wasn't I like almost didn't like it because it was so intense so yeah. I really liked that scene but I yeah, also really liked you- no go ahead go ahead no I was just gonna comment on that like when you meet your idol, you don't know how you're going to react. And yeah. I remember once I met this Broadway actor and I got so nervous that I forgot my entire English, like completely. <laughs> and I couldn't talk to him because I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> I, I can't, words, words. <laughs> so yeah, you don't know how you're going to react. That was mm-hmm. also how I felt when I met Libba Bray a couple years ago. <laughs> I was like, hi, how's your day going? I don't know what to say. I like your book. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I met Passy Claire, I walked away crying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the journey. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Rough, rough times. You know, another part that I really liked was when they were in the party and she kissed him. I don't know why. That's another one of the parts that I did like. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, like, that. can't remember the party scene, but I remember when she kissed him. Mm-hmm. I was shocked by it. I was like, I yeah. loved it oh, because, yeah, because yeah. usually the boys kiss the girls in this type of story. So I was like, yeah, girl, go ahead and kiss him. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. <laughs> what about Lee's favorite parts? The rest of the book. Um. Well, I. Hmm. That's hard. Does anyone know off the top of their head? Because I need to think yeah, about this. Yeah, my least favorite part was all like the whole talent show part. I was just like, aren't they in a programming summer camp? Like, <laughs> aren't, they, aren't they supposed to use their time to develop an app? Why are they 
dancing. I don't get it. Like, <laughs> like bikinis. Like, it seems like, like I could feel like, like suddenly for the turned. Or whatever. It, I felt like it suddenly turned into a, a theater camp, and I was just like, I don't get this. <laughs> I was just honestly imagining like the Mean Girls scene where they're performing at like the winter time. <laughs> that right? was, that's all I was uh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, you know what else I hated? That part of Aishi, or I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, and Celia. Like, I felt that came out of nowhere and I hated it. It was just so oh, yeah. cliche and didn't make any I was sense. I was like, what? I don't. Oh. That was really out of nowhere. I felt like when they went to dinner together and like Celia gets there and she's like, Will you come to the bathroom with me? I was like, what's going on? And then like you find out that they hooked up. I was like, what? Like it was so unexpected. I was it's like, like it was at that stage of the book where I was like, fuck it, anything is going at this <laughs> point. Like anything is happening. I literally went back to read again because I, I thought that I skipped a page or something. I was like, what did this happen? Okay, so I have a comment on that because I guessed it and I don't know how, how did I you guessed, guessed it. this, Missy. But, okay, so <laughs> Rishi and Dimple are in their room, and then the brother, what is his name again? Ashish. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Ashish comes, and so then they have that moment. Then we already knew that Celia was going to meet them at Rishi's mm -hmm. apartment or room or whatever. And yeah. then both Dimple and Rishi leave. And I was like, well, where's Celia gonna go? Because, and no one ever gets a text message from her being like, are you there or anything? And so I was like, <laughs> what if she gets it in? Because, yeah. I mean, he sounds cute. Although it's also a little bit creepy because he's an infant. <laughs> So, but I called it, but I, I like, I called it in a way where I was like, there's no way that's what happened because he's an infant. Like, how young is he supposed to be? I don't remember. Maybe he's next year. I think it was only like a year difference, but like. Okay, but still it felt but weird. It was like <laughs> high school and college. Also though, like at this point, sometimes I get freaked out when they say they're 17, even if everyone is 17, because I'm like, I'm 25. That's weird. <laughs> I'm a substitute teacher. I work with children that are 17 they're weird it's creepy i don't know but it's not creepy because they're supposed to be the same age and i'm not the same age and i'm not the one in the story anyway I love that. so yeah i did see that coming sort of and i actually liked it although it it didn't seem it did make me like squinty eyed about how they met beforehand that was what i did uh, that was what i um, didn't yeah. believe in. But like, like the, it would make sense if yeah. they had just like shown up and like hooked up or something but it was like no like he comes to san francisco so often like they happen to meet like that was just kind of far no, and that, that was the part that i didn't really believe, but i really that. liked the 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 rest of it like i liked that there was that brother the history, the, like the backstory mm -hmm. yeah i liked it but, yeah yeah i don't know what my least favorite part would be i mean i i really liked the book like i it was I think the most frustrating thing for me was watching Celia and Dimple fight and like listening to Dimple like she has these like feelings about what Celia's doing with the dude not a shish a shish a shish wait say it again for me I'm sorry ashish ashish not that part but what she's when she's like dating the other guy the rich one yeah Kevin. Evan yes, Evan. Evan. When she's dating Evan and like Dimple doesn't like it but doesn't ever like try to talk to her about like, are you sure this is a yeah. good idea? I was like, where's your good friendship, Dimple? I feel like mm -hmm. that you were talking so much about at the beginning of the book. I feel like none of my least favorite parts were really least favorite parts because whereas they frustrated me, I think they were necessary to the story. Like I didn't like when Isabel and Celia went along with what Evan and Harry wanted for the talent show, but I thought it was really important to the story and I liked yeah. how it played out in the end. But like, but like, so I can't qualify it as my least favorite part because right. I think it was important, but like, who's gonna like something like that? Right, right. And it's, it did feel realistic. Like these, mm -hmm. these characters are yeah. all just out of high school. So they're basically still in high school. 
Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you end up going with the majority rule because you don't want to be left out and you don't want to feel, you don't want them to feel negatively towards you. So you just go with what they want. And it's Mm -hmm. a thing of whole, like all of these new experiences and they're just trying to find their place. And it's like, I guess, partially coming of age story because they're in that in-between phase between college and high school. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that exactly. plays in the part. I feel like most YA rom coms tend to also double as coming of age. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean that's the part of the age range. I think like yeah, that's part that, of YA is just coming. Yeah. Of age. <laughs> there's there's no way to have a story when you're in that young adult time frame mm-hmm. of not quite a kid anymore, but not quite an adult yet, mm-hmm. and not have to learn something. I'm I still feel like I still feel like. That's why I like young adult because even though I'm to the age now where I like I do a lot of adult things, I have my own apartment, I have a fiance. Ew, that's weird. Yeah. And, <laughs> like all of these things are very adult, but like most of the time I still feel like a kid. So mm-hmm. but then at the same time as a substitute teacher working with high schoolers, I'm like, mm-hmm. I you're annoying. <laughs> I am not you. <laughs> yeah, there's a difference here. Yeah. And I can feel it. But then sometimes you go into a classroom and the kids happen to be really mature and you're like, this is weird because we're not <laughs> the <same> age. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very confusing. Okay, so let's see. Do you guys have any questions to bring up? I'm trying to think of. Mm. I asked all of my my basic Did we, ones. Can we talk about like how awesome like the diversity was in this book because it was epic all the way around and that's what I loved about this book. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Um, did any of you guys find it hard to remember that Celia wasn't white? She wasn't I didn't. White. No. <laughs> she's she's Mexican, I think. She, is or, she Mexican? I know I she's know Latina, she's but she's I don't Latina. Know I think she was Mexican. I think so. I don't Didn't know. Or maybe they think she, she's also bisexual. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, I noticed they that had too. one line. I'm pretty sure that said it. I missed that. Uh, she said yes. that she had a girlfriend last year or something like that. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, it, I like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if any of you plan to pick up her future work, but like it increases in diversity. Like the, mm. there's even better LGBTQ rap in that and such. In um, from Twinkle with Love. Yeah, in from Twinkle, and I'm assuming in from what I've heard in the sequel to Dimple as well. What is that one called again? The- There's a sequel. It's called, it's called There's Something About Sweetie, and um, it's based on Ash- Ashish Rishi's younger brother. Yeah. Um, Ooh, and basically, like yeah, he falls in love with um a fat Indian athlete named Sweetie. So. Mm, yeah. How exciting! Yeah, I I've read about that one, but I didn't remember the general plot. I just remembered that it was about Ashish. Yeah. Yeah. I I didn't catch the bisexual rep, which I'm disappointed it in. Was, it was before. very, very good. Yeah, okay. it, was it was like one line. line. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah. And for some reason, um, you know, it's probably been ingrained in me by just, you know, the what is it called? Like the the determining that anyone who isn't specified is white. It, it was probably me, my brain just doing that, but I could not remember that Celia wasn't white for me. It was. I didn't even know that. Like, no, I agree. With I you. Completely right. missed yeah, that. it was rough for me. I mean, I'm glad that she was Latina. I, it was, it was my brain doing it for me. Definitely, it was like I didn't remember, and then there would be something about it, and I was like, oh yeah, I f- keep forgetting. Yeah, I so. think that's because um, they did mention it, but it wasn't like a big deal. Mm-hmm. So, like, for example, I knew she was Latina because the moment I read it, I was like, oh, she's Latina. Okay. So mm-hmm. I felt mm-hmm. connected. But if you know, if you know what, I felt more like a connection with Dimple, like a better connection with her than with Celia, even though she's Latina and I'm Latina. And okay. I felt that was like a little bit weird, but it was mainly because, um, as Latinos, we also have like very conservative families. So a lot of things or a lot of problems that Dimple had with her family, I've had with my own family. So when they mentioned that Celia was Latina, I was just like, oh, this, this is gonna be great. And then I didn't feel any connection with her because it, it wasn't really important. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm i glad that it's there. It just <laughs> to remember. I, I was so annoyed with myself for 
so I long. I loved this story because it like it shows a story that hasn't been told in YA. Like yeah. when have you heard of like an Indian like arranged marriage in the modern day world being told and not only told in YA but getting popular and receiving amazing mm -hmm. reviews? Like and when that's does it told happen? in a positive way too. Like it's exactly. not that's it's not a the story. Yeah. And like, I think the other thing about it also is that like this is a very stereotypical rom com, but something I very firmly believe is that most um people, like Indian people and like um Latina people and people of like marginalized identities haven't seen themselves in like stereotypical tropes and stuff. So for a story with those kinds of like very stereotypical tropey rom-com story to feature two characters um, who are people of color as their primary source and to be based around that culture as well is just really huge. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, very well said, very well said. Kind of going along the same line, I loved that Rishi liked art and was drawing an Indian comic book character. Yeah, like, I like that as well. Oh, I like that as every well. time he talked about it, I was like, can we just have this entire <laughs> comic book, please? Like, you know what? That yeah. frustrated me so much because I wanted to have sketches. I wanted to see the <laughs> yeah, drawings. I was just like, I going forward, like, are there any drawings here? Oh, damn, there aren't any. Yeah, I was, I was like, really like that. something that annoyed me about this book was that, like, and I mean, it didn't really, it annoyed me, but it also, it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. There were just, this book felt really jumbled to me. And there were so many aspects of the story that I did love, but I felt like they were also rushed and just thrown in there. Like something like his art, I would love to know more about it. Like I understand with a lot of like YA contemporaries, they are short and there's only one main story that they have to focus on. But if you bring in all of these different aspects, like we've got the the like talent show we have that them creating an app like i wanted to see more about that i wanted to see more about their thought process with the app i just mm -hmm. it felt like the priorities with the storyline were just a little bit confused but i loved all the different aspects i just wanted to see more focus on some of them mm -hmm. i also yeah. really want the app like i don't have diabetes i know but I, I, want yeah. it. I, need I was really app. excited about the app i feel like it was totally brushed over like you heard about it at the beginning and then it was yeah. like all the romance stuff and then it was like oh the app again like remember the mm -hmm. app like i wish I there was more wanted development it. There. yeah i wanted i wanted them to fall in love because of their love for this yeah. thing that they were creating Me together too. yeah that would have been amazing yeah mm -hmm. But you know what? It wasn't like, quite for bad. example, I studied computer science in school. So I've been through this type of programs and I've done like different apps. Well, in that at that time, it, they weren't called apps. They were just programs for your computer. So I was really excited about that part. And then it was just like you've mentioned. But like, like, don't brush over it. Huh? Yeah, definitely wasn't the, the key part. Um, okay, so speaking of like their like other stuff going on than just the main romance. I want to talk about their families. Mm -hmm. And like I just I really liked their families. Yeah, I really liked the way it played out. I, I loved the whole arc with their families. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that that was the best developed part was mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think that uh, I feel like I've just been bringing up the word Indian like 20 times in this. Do it, do <laughs> it. <laughs> um, you need it. I just, I feel like a, there are very blatant stereotypes of what Asian parents as a whole are like, and this book really debunked that. Um, because even the kids thought their parents were very stereotypical Indian parents for a long time, like where she was like, oh, my parents would never support me doing something that's not STEM related, which is a very Asian parent stereotype to have. And like Dimple was like, oh, my mom wants me to behave like the perfect Indian girl. But they learned that in truth, their parents wanted them to be happy and wanted them to be successful and just wanted them to be safe. And they were doing what they had been taught as kids, but that was not true to this generation. And they learned that too. And I just thought that that was really well done and it really debunked the kind of like what Asian parents and what Indian parents are like stereotypes. 
Mm-hmm. And Dimple and Rishi both had very different ideas of their like of their parents. Mm-hmm. Dim- Dimple was really against her family ideals or what she perceived her family's yeah. ideals to be, mm-hmm. while Rishi was really trying to conform to that to like I guess like make up for his brother. Mm-hmm. But in the end, like that's not even really what their parents wanted. It was yeah. cool. Yeah. I really liked in general just how the parents were so present in the book. I feel like in a lot of YA yes. books and like contemporaries, especially, it's like my biggest pet peeve. Like the parents That's are never mentioned. Reason. They're yeah. never mentioned. And I, they were so prevalent in this story. So that was like really exciting. And I enjoyed mm-hmm. that a lot. I almost wanted more. Like, I, I, yeah. One yeah. of my favorite. I just things. wanted more in this book. Like, yeah. give, me, give me 600 pages. Yeah. <laughs> From this uh, book was when. I don't remember if Dimple went home or if it was before she left, but her her cousin got pregnant. And so yeah, everyone is talking mm-hmm. about it. And she's like, oh, now I'm going to hear more about it. <laughs> and like her annoyance at her, at her very normal family, essentially. Yes. And like mm-hmm. everyone's reactions to a pregnancy and like everything was just like, I want more of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. It's domestic fluff. Yeah, it was so like cute, while at the same time it was still dynamic in bringing to the to the front line of like Dimple's feelings towards her family and towards her culture and all this stuff. Like, I just thought it was so nice and fluffy and subtle at the same time, but like still doing good. I don't. Know. I liked it. Okay. Agree. <sighs> I feel like if I could give this book like um, like one big criticism or like a recommendation, it would be like to focus more on those like other aspects of the story. Yeah. Like I feel I liked how the family was like the family aspect was subtle, but I would have liked more of a focus on that um, mm-hmm. than the love story because those parts that we were saying that felt slow would have probably felt a lot better if they were more like spaced out, I guess you mm-hmm. can say. Um, yeah, so we yeah, weren't just getting like, because it felt like beginning of the story, love story, ooh, end of the story. Yeah, um, exactly. Exactly. Even though we loved all these different aspects of it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you had to recommend this book to somebody who doesn't read, how would you recommend it? How would you Luffy pitch Indian it? rom-com. Luffy <laughs> Indian rom-com. Oh, I made it hard. Not that I have an answer. (laughs) I would Uh, probably just say, like, fun, cute romance, diverse. I don't know. Yeah. Enjoyable read. I'd say, um, I guess, a fun and fluffy, but still, like, moving and diverse contemporary. That's a good one. What if you had to try to convince someone to read this, Christina? <laughs> <laughs> I'm quiet because I don't want to recommend this book. Okay, okay. Um, I would say, I would say, I don't know how I would to do say it quickly. If you want a cute rom com with diverse characters, but that's it, <laughs> go ahead and read it. Yeah, I agree. It's it's very light. So I would definitely say like uh, it's a YA contemporary. It's a very fluffy romance about two Indian teens. And it's a quick read. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I dude, this book was so quick. I mean, and it's not that short. How how long? It's, is an it? it's like 400 book. pages. Yeah. Yeah, to me that seems that seems long for a contemporary. Yeah. Is it? Um, it, it's, I, like, it's like an average contemporary book, but it, I feel like it flew by. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I read it super fast. I didn't even think. Christina, did you read it fast, <laughs> even though you didn't love it? No. <laughs> Dang it! I was hoping we would get one. <laughs> no, it, the parts that I liked, I was just like, oh, I need more, and then it was slow again, and I was just like, oh, I don't want to read this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, was really? anyone else like bothered by the insta love or did you feel it was insta lovey? Uh, yeah. No, I totally thought it was. Yes. <laughs> I definitely thought it was insta lovey, but sometimes I'm okay. Like I don't I couldn't I like tell you what my 
like you know how people are either like I love insta love or I hate insta love I don't know what I am because sometimes it really annoys me and sometimes it's really fine with me and this one it didn't bother me the, some of the other things bothered me like him having all this money and just being able to throw it around I was like how dare how dare you <laughs> but like yeah. I didn't hate that they ended up falling in love really quickly although I wasn't expecting them to because I was thinking this was going to be more of a hate to love situation. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. And it was not that. I was so disappointed about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I definitely cool. thought it was going to be not. What I was, was actually really movie. hoping, like, that the end of the story would end up with them actually parting ways, and what they learned was more about their family and about themselves, more than falling in love. That's Me totally. too. I thought Look it would. It would have left the. There. Yeah, it, it was going that way. It almost mm -hmm. didn't, it didn't quite get there. That's yeah, awesome. I totally agree. I liked how it ended, <laughs> but I think I would have liked the way Momo wanted it to end as well. Because I think that would have been an interesting take on it. Mm -hmm. I would have been very sad if they didn't end it. <laughs> I also would have been, like, devastated. Yeah. Well, I would not have been okay. I would have it would be for them to part ways, but for them to also, like, like be on good terms like to be like yeah. they, knowledge, mm -hmm. knowledge girls, like to be on good terms to be friends mm -hmm. and maybe in the future they get married i felt like it was enough that they like had their little break and she like kind mm -hmm. of realized what she wanted to do and what her true like passion was again and then realized that she could have both i thought that was yeah. important I like so that at least there was that so i was fine with yeah them back together but i did when they did get back together, although I would have been mad if they hadn't, <laughs> when they did get back together, I couldn't help but be like, you guys are barely 18 and yeah. just going into college. And the likelihood of this being good in four years <laughs> is low. <laughs> <laughs> the realist person inside of me <laughs> can't help but be skeptical that it would work out and it probably would have been better for you to part ways and then come back later which yeah but when did but that's the, the realistic part yeah, yeah that's that's the the real person not the person who loves YA contemporary because mm -hmm. there's always I mean there's no magic in contemporary but there's always a little bit of magic in books yeah. Yeah. a little bit of magic yeah, yeah. <laughs> Also, um, regarding the breakup, like, was anyone else bothered that what I liked about their relationship is that they could talk to each other and they felt comfortable with each other. And then Dimple had yeah. to go ahead and hurt Rishi and just lie to him and be this awful person. And I was just like, where did that come from? I hated it so I much. I think it was frustrating, but it made sense to me with how her character existed like why she did that because she was angry with herself and from what i got from her she's the type of person who when she's angry with herself she takes it out on the people who try to love and support her and kind of isolates herself and i felt like that's what she did in that situation um Definitely. it felt realistic i, mean, I probably would have yeah, done the same thing like, yeah. i mean it makes sense but it makes sense but since i already had like this thing that i didn't like <laughs> it was with, already like dimple because she kept hurting him and let's like we need to talk about the consent sexual part because that that's a different oh, yeah, issue that, that i have with it so since i already had all of this background i was so mad at her for hurting richie the way she did at the end i know it makes sense i know it's like normal but i was so frustrated with it mm -hmm. remind me exactly what she did about what like right before the breakup what did she do Oh, she basically like told him that she didn't love him and that um, it was all his fault and things like that. Like, I didn't want a relationship and things like that. She told him that he was a coward for not pursuing mm -hmm. his heart and Thank that you. he didn't want to be with the coward. Yeah, That's exactly. It. I was like, I know there was a word that mm -hmm. she repeated <laughs> that was important, yeah. but I could not that remember. That he was so okay. offended by. Yeah. I mean, the thing is that the truth hurts. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> I want to talk about the punching now that books and baking brought up. Um, okay, so what did I miss? Because I did not, I did not 
witness so, the punch. Yeah, that's the thing. Is, <laughs> I, that's why I wanted to talk about it. Because the, the one thing that I had heard about this book, other than like the great representation and the fluffy love story before reading it, was I had also heard a lot of people complain about like aggression between Dimple punching and Dimple punching Rishi. Like I knew mm -hmm. that that was a thing. So I was ready to go into it looking for this because I wanted to be able to talk about it during the live show. Mm -hmm. And I found it in no way a problem. Like the way that I imagined how it's described is exactly what I do to Matt all the time. <laughs> And it's really just like it's like it's like a tap, like a little show. Well, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's like it's like when you're annoyed, you like you're like or like, like stop it, stop like it. Like you you do yeah. like the punching, but you're not like actually trying to cause physical harm. It's the same thing as like a poke or like right. I don't a know. nudge. It's a nudge. Yeah, I think yeah. the problem was, I think that the oh. problem the most people have with it is that he keeps complaining about it. He's like, oh, that yeah. hurt, or ouch, or I to didn't me, like I, that. No, I only, agree. He only said ouch the first time. Yeah. And then <laughs> the second time, and then after that, he never actually made any physical, like, like he, ne he never said response. that it hurt him. And, yeah. and Dimple also said she lightened how heavy her punches were in her POV. She said, like in her point of view, she said, I didn't punch him as hard this time. Yeah. And I also felt like the way he, the way I imagined it in my head, how he was saying ow and that hurt or however he responded was flirtatious. Yeah. It that's wasn't what I in too. any way like negative. Hey! Hello. I'm so sorry. I just woke up. <laughs> that's okay. We're we're talking about the um, how Dimple would punch Rishi, um, and oh like <laughs> there's controversy. I don't know. That sounds like too strong of a word, maybe. But there's like discussion about this book in general about the punching and if that's okay or not, and or if it's abuse. In I've been hearing a lot too uh, from other people. Yeah, and, uh, I haven't read the book yet. I've been seeing a lot of uh, punching. Oh, you haven't and, read it yet? Okay. Uh, well, uh, when I haven't uh, read it yet, but when I read it, that's when I understood um, where they where where they are coming from, and mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I'm not really in favor of that as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just not look like shit. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> uh, Cav, were you gonna say something? Yeah, I was gonna say um. <laughs> this is going like really deep into it, but this is just from conversations I've had from people. A lot of like the calling Dimple aggressive and stuff comes from the fact that Dimple's a woman of color who's like very strong in her own beliefs and just a very strong character. Like when Hermione slaps Draco, no one would call her abusive, but when Dimple punched her, she, multiple people called her abusive. And a lot of that stems from the fact that she's a woman of color. Mm -hmm. And Hermione slapped slash, if I remember correctly, it might have been even a punch. It was um, a punch. It was. Yes, she <laughs> punched him oh. like to hurt him. That yeah. was yeah. like. Straight, and, I, I don't think it's, it's specifically that. I think that he deserved it. I mean, and I think it was just once because he did something yeah. to her. I don't well, re really remember. Like, there one. are multiple like. Yeah. No, no, no. Who are not of color who would do this and would not get called out. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's an interesting, definitely an interesting um, like point of view on it too. Like, how much do our internal biases yeah. cause mm -hmm. us to think about something in a different way? Because, like, to me, the if you were comparing Hermione punching Draco and and the punching that happens in this, they're not they're not even in the same category. Because to me, there are also children in that, and I feel well, like. I'm there's mm -hmm. barely adults in this. <laughs> you're, well, you're barely an adult. <laughs> okay, I'm little, so. <laughs> um, like th this, the punching that happens in this book to me felt flirtatious, and I can see how that yeah. could potentially yeah. end up being a dangerous line because when does it become abuse if you're okay with punching in the first place? But like, I think it becomes abuse when it's manipulative. Yeah, and I feel like when every there's the cyclical, the little, the little, like yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. Right? Like when you when you're in when a relationship is abusive, it's your the the power dynamic is is that's what's used to create a power dynamic. Yeah. And it's this didn't feel at all like that. That's yeah, why well, Dimple was Dimple was really doing it playfully, and I think it happened rough. Like I, because of the criticism that happened after the first time I read it. This time when I went through, I literally counted how many times, and I remember I counted only three or four times she playfully punched him. Oh, okay. So I, I really feel like people kind of blew it out of proportion. Like yeah. That and the coffee thing people comment on. But if some stranger came up to me and called me his wife, I'd throw coffee at him. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. definitely. I, love that. I didn't that's have a problem with that. One of my favorite that. parts of the book. Me too. Yeah, I I liked it. And as a kid, as a kid, I threw chocolate milk on a boy who said my boyfriend was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Get it, Miss Sassy Cassie in the house. <laughs> so I felt it. <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask you, can we talk about the consent part? Because I don't know if I'm crazy because I felt that if the roles were reversed, people would talk about it a lot. But right now, or in this book, because she was the one that wanted sex and he was the one that, that didn't want it, nobody really talks about it. And you know, I feel yeah. very uncomfortable about that. Yeah, yeah I actually idea. read that as well and was like, hmm. I thought it was going to be a far bigger issue than it was, and it, it was not yeah. an issue at all. Me too. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it. I when I read it, I was like, "Hmm, are we gonna go somewhere with this?" And then it kind of never comes up. So See, that's like, okay, one of those that things, just like a, one of those aspects that could have had some depth, but yeah, did not. I really wish they had like actually, like they had actually gone because they did both give sent give consent, but I feel like it would have been much more powerful had they actually had like a discussion. A yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. because it's something Rishi said he wanted. I would have liked that. Mm -hmm. You know what? They, like, I was going to recommend, um, I know that not everyone loves this book because there's other issues in it, but Cut Both Ways has a great conversation on consent in it. And it's about these two girls that are going to have sex together for the first time. What is this book? It's called Cut Both Ways. I don't remember what the author's name is. Laura, you it's, read it, right? Yeah, it's by Carrie Mesrobian. I didn't like it. I, but... Yeah, I actually knew that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a pretty controversial book because people say that the bisexual rep is really not great, which I didn't hate it as a bisexual person, but that doesn't mean that my vote counts for all bisexual people. So, Amen. yeah. But has a great conversation about consent, mm -hmm. an amazing conversation about consent. And that's the, the plus side of that. So if you wanted one that has that, then that would be a book that you could read. I'm trying to find that scene. Did it happen super late in the book? I don't remember. I think it was like midway, maybe. Midway? Um, yeah, I, I liked that in the book, like, Usually in YA, or at least the YA that I've read, sex is like a taboo or sex is something negative. And I liked that in this book, it was something positive. And that even though they came from conservative families, sex wasn't an issue, which could have been something that they had problems about. So my only problem with it was the consent, basically. Yeah. I mean, I liked that they had sex. I liked that they took it like in the good way. Uh -huh. And... Everything was great with the sex. It wasn't an issue, but the consent part was the one that I didn't. For like. someone, um, for someone as uh, deeply, um, like deeply cultural, like with those traditional beliefs as Rishi, it should have been a bigger deal than. Yeah. It mm -hmm. was. Um, I have to go. Um, but it was very nice being in this live show. Momo. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, enjoy the rest of your live show, guys. Bye. Have fun. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Poor Momo. She has to get up so early for work, and it's oh. it's 10 p.m. East Coast, so yeah. she's like, I need to go. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I guess I don't really have much else to say about the consent thing, other than I definitely squinted at it. Yeah. It yeah. Never really talked about it. I, I actually was surprised that there wasn't um, more of a discussion, considering that so when Dimple, when you, I think that's in Dimple's perspective, if I remember correctly. And it didn't surprise me that Dimple um, would want to have sex 
and this could be totally me being annoying and stereotypical and whatever but like mm -hmm. because she's the one that's kind of more against her culture her her indian culture family and everything it didn't surprise me that she would be the one to push it and i thought that we would get a little bit more pushback from rishi considering how he feels about his indian culture and from what i know uh, it tends to be de frowned upon before marriage. So I thought that we were gonna get more of a conversation, but like, it didn't bother me that we didn't. It just wasn't what I was expecting, I guess. I don't know. No, yeah. I hope that didn't sound I, stupid. I didn't expect no, I didn't. it as well. And actually, uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I actually hated Dimple when she gave herself to uh, Rishi because I really didn't expect that they would have sex because she came off as a very strong woman and and a woman who doesn't need love or doesn't need a man but when he had sex with Rishi it just frustrated me mm -hmm. and yeah mm -hmm. I think that, um personally I think that you can be like a strong and independent woman and still because like I think you can be a strong and independent woman and still have um, a significant other and still have sex and still have that kind of connection like my only issue was that i wish they had had a more in-depth or a more structured conversation about it but i didn't feel like dimple being with rishi or having sex with rishi in any way negated her independence or her strength or the fact that she was like a badass female character mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i agree, I agree. Yeah, yeah my problem my problem with her yeah okay go on <laughs> I think so too that if there would be a discussion about it on the book, then I would have liked it better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Christina I think Williams. my problem with Dimple was basically that she was portrayed as this amazing, strong female character that wanted to pursue her dreams and goals. And then this guy appeared and she forgot about everything. And I was just like, yeah. we're, 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 we're <laughs> yeah. Racing it out, Christina. <laughs> I think that's why I was expecting it to go more like what I was saying earlier, where I really thought that the story was going to be more about her ending up falling in love with him because of their work together on something that they both worked really hard on. And right. I mean, I again still loved their love story, but <laughs> it's not at all what I was expecting. So yeah, I think I think it could have been maybe an even stronger story had it been an initial like no 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 and yeah. then ending up working mm -hmm. together and i mean that is kind of what it was they did start working together and then yeah. and then dimple is like oh i like you yeah, yeah. i agree with that but i also think that like it was realistic that dimple like because in the high school relationships, I think Momo might have mentioned this. She mentioned how like this was a point where everyone's finding their footing. And when you enter romantic relationships when you're this young, like a lot of times you, you're like, oh, do I have to give up other parts mm -hmm. of myself to be with this person? And I think that's what Dimple's arc was. And then she went back on that and she was like, oh, crap, I just gave up on everything I care about and then she spiraled and that's why she yelled at rishi and she took her anger out at him and then she had to take her time to think about it and realize oh i can be independent i can pursue a career but that doesn't mean i have to give up someone who's important in my life and i think that was realistic and whereas i understand being frustrated by it and in a sense i might have I'm, i think it could have got the romance could have been done a different way i think it also made sense as to why it was done this way oh yeah, yeah. i totally agree too like it i've been there <laughs> like I, I, relationships at that age. Well, I mean, relationships at any age. Yeah. When you when you fall head over heels, sometimes the rest of your life kind of gets pushed aside, at least for a short period of time. And hopefully, it's not. That's not how it goes for long term. But like that, especially in the beginning of a relationship, when you're when you're really into a relationship, it's just it's all it's encompassing. It's your entire world, and then. And then you realize, oh, I have other things too that I want and like and love. So now I have to reform and shape my world to e either include the new relationship or I have to dump it. I mean, and that's yeah. how a relationship goes. Mm -hmm. So I, it was definitely realistic. It doesn't like, and I think this comes from 
maybe just not I don't always love romance in YA contemporary. Like I don't always love that type of contemporary. So I'm even surprised that I loved this as much as I did um, because it's just not my usual reading style. So any last minute thoughts? I think we're gonna, I think we're ready to wrap up if you guys. Did anyone else love that she dressed up as Daria? Me. Yeah, that was funny. It was so funny. <laughs> that perfect. was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was the, I think that was one of my favorite surprise moments that were just like a small little. And one more thing. thing. Did anyone else look up the dances that they meant, they kept mentioning that they were doing for the talent show? Like I, I looked them up on good on YouTube and I saw what they were doing. I was just like, Oh, it's very interesting that this actually exists and I can actually see it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about wishing Evelyn Hugo was real because she's not. <laughs> oh, I haven't read that yet. Read it, read it now. It's on my TBR for next month. Okay, good. At least it's on my TBR for a month coming up. Wow, really good. All right, any we other? TBR is forever. <laughs> yeah. Any other last minute thoughts? I just really love Dimple and Rishi. I'm excited to read uh, from Twinkle with Love. Yeah. Was anyone else bothered by the cover? Because I loved the cover. I did but, too. But when they when when they described how Dimple looked, like she had curls and she didn't wear wear any makeup. And if you look at her at the back, she's like straight hair and made full of makeup. And I think if I remember correctly, she only wore like black and gray and things like that. And then in and the she's, cover, wearing orange. she's wearing orange. Oh, and I was just I like, think, oh. I yeah. think uh, it's this same outfit. And I think that she wears this orange thing at a particular thing. Like yeah. her, well, then right? I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, I don't it, remember either. But I was just like, where are the curls? Where are the curls? <laughs> it's the, it's the yeah. first day because her mom packed her or like made her wear a colorful, uh, I don't remember what this type of shirt is called. But I'm a Kurta. say it again. A Kurta. Kurtov? No, yeah. Kurta. Kurta. And I totally, I totally missed that. Yeah, mm -hmm. her mom makes her wear this color, and she says something about how, like, I usually wear gray or black or like the boring colors, and mm -hmm. so she feels like, like outside of the norm when she's walking yeah. around the campus. And then Rishi comes up and says, "Like, aren't you excited to marry something?" <laughs> Best. <Yeah. part. laughs> <laughs> Definitely the best part of the book. <laughs> All right, before we go, I want to say one more time, Sassy Book Club for August is The Raven Boys. And if you follow me on Sassy Book Club, Sassy underscore book club on Twitter, you can see the reading schedule because we're buddy reading it. If you want, you don't have to buddy read it. You could just watch the live show, which will be, <laughs> hold on, I got to grab my calendar. It'll be... September 8th, 5 p.m. PST, which is 8 p.m. EST, mm -hmm. I think. Okay, yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Glad I can do the math. And yeah, yeah that's, that's it, it for the July Sassy Book Club. Thank you guys for hosting. Uh, you can find them all. I'll link them down below uh, in just a few minutes, and I'll uh, tweet out all of their Twitters in just a few minutes from the Sassy Book Club. So. You can get all of their following things, and you guys were all amazing. And we're going to stop the broadcast now.